there's getting lost in a video game, and then there's getting lost in a video game. Yet the bad kind of getting lost is something anyone who plays a lot of video games will doubtless have experienced. That familiar sinking feeling where you realise, oh crap, I have no idea where I am or where to go next. And while this can occur to anyone in most any game, there are certain levels out there that are infamous for getting players turned around, mixed up and damn well disorientated. <laughs> These are the most confusing levels you for sure got lost in. Beware spoilers for the following games and thanks to OX Supporters Club Discord member Sahoiba for inspiring this list. If you haven't already, why not become a supporter yourself? Details in the description. Off we go. It's weird that Mario has come to represent fun, family-friendly gaming, seeing as how when he first arrived on the scene, he represented games so bastard hard you'd want to hurl your NES console right in his mustachioed face. Surviving the original Super Mario Bros. gauntlet of platforming with limited lives and no checkpoints was already a daunting affair, only for players to find an entirely different, even more sadistic challenge waiting for them on the very last level of the game. Specifically World 8-4, a level set inside Bowser's castle with a trick even more cruel than its many fire traps and lurking enemies. Because what seems like an ordinary level actually loops endlessly, and the only way to make it through is to find which of these many warp pipes leads to the next room, and try to repeat this process. Which sounds arduous, but doable, until I tell you that every other warp pipe in the level takes you, oh, oh, oh no, right back to the start. Compounding the issue is the fact that it's extremely hard to tell where you are in this warp pipe maze, so you will almost immediately become lost, seeing as, and no shade on his decorating ability, Bowser's castle is very low on distinguishing features. Ever heard of an accent wall, Bowser? It'll change your life. The only way through this memorably horrible maze is by process of elimination, and to somehow get very good at remembering which pipes you've already tried. Oh, and doing so to a strict time limit of about 160 seconds. Good luck with that. But while it may take several playthroughs, if you persevere, you can conquer the maze. And at last, at last get your promised showdown with Bowser for a chance at finally beating the game once and for all. Bring me Mario's face and my NES console and my hurling gloves. Now! Transmission from the captain's dropship was from this area. That was over 12 hours ago. When you locate Captain Keys, radio in and I'll come pick you up. On the face of it, Halo is a very straightforward game. You're a dude in a big space suit and you kill a bunch of aliens with guns or an elbow to the face or both. Simple. But not all of the game is so simple. There are some levels in which you can get so lost that you'll be stuck there for six seasons and have a disappointing ending. One such level is 343 Guilty Spark, first off because you're dumped out in a foggy swamp. And with Halo's limited navigation system, it can be extremely easy to wander off in the completely wrong direction. After much shooting of Covenant forces and parkouring up and over tree roots that honestly look like they're meant to be invisible walls rather than in your route across the map, you finally stumble across the entrance to a mysterious structure. And if you're thinking, whew, now I'm gonna head in some nice normal corridors that I'm unlikely to get lost in, I have three words for you. Ha, ha, and ha. Instead, you descend into a maze of large rooms and forking corridors, and also apparently into a fugue state whenever you try to remember which way you came from. The place has seen better days, and there is usually only one working door for you to leave each room. But said rooms are also full of Covenant forces trying to kill you. So, while you might have spotted your way out when you first got in, you end up so turned around in the laser violence that sometimes you lose your bearings and end up walking back the way you came. 
When you finally reach the heart of the complex, you discover that the team you came here to rescue were killed by some horrible creatures known as the Flood, which you now have to escape. So now you have to fight these assholes through the same maze of rooms as before, but backwards. Yay! We're honestly not sure what's harder, fighting off all these monsters as they jump out at you from all angles, or getting stuck in the room with the light bridge for ages until you realize you have to climb up on these Covenant supply crates. For anyone still stuck on that level all these years later, you're welcome. When you eventually get out, you're joined by some more soldiers to help you fight off the swarms of enemies rather than spin in circles. And the game helpfully puts some little lights around the swamp to somewhat guide you, helping you finally get your hands on the titular 343 Guilty Spark. Greetings, I am the monitor of Installation 04. I am 343 Guilty Spark. Whew, glad I finally got through that one. Hopefully the next level is a bit easier to navigate. The library, cool. Wait. Why are you giving me that look? You have to assume none of the lions in The Lion King played the Super NES game of the same title. For one thing, they don't have thumbs, and for another, it's impossible to imagine any lion bending the knee to Simba and accepting him as their rightful monarch, having seen him in level 9 of the game, Simba's Return, hopelessly lost and pitifully spamming claw attacks in an effort not to be hurt by hyenas. That's the way things go in this mind-bending level, however, which reimagines Simba's dramatic return to Pride Rock as a baffling maze designed first to get the poor lion lost, then overwhelmed by his drooling enemies. All presumably while Mufasa looks on from the clouds, deeply ashamed. This penultimate level in the game is navigated via screens full of caves, any one of which will lead Simba to a corresponding cave on an almost identical screen filled with deadly hyenas that must be slapped to death. There's no way to deduce which of the, oh my god, 32 caves leads to the end of the level, except via trial and error, and a great deal of hyena slapping. And yes, the hyena slapping is mandatory, because incredibly, you can't go through any caves until every hyena on each screen is dead. And all the hyenas respawn every time a screen loads. Let's see a lion do that. This makes even backtracking to a previous screen full of caves an absolute nightmare, but mercifully, not one you'll be stuck in for long, because the sheer volume of hyenas in this baffling maze will quickly overwhelm Simba's health bar, and you'll likely die long before you even begin to figure out where the hell you are. <laughs> then it's back to the start, where even more annoyingly you can actually see Pride Rock behind Simba, in the complete opposite direction to the cave maze, so he's probably going entirely the wrong way anyway. Hey, Mufasa with the bird's eye view! You want to offer a little help? Too ashamed to speak, probably. Scholars have widely agreed that within the realm of interactive video game entertainment, Dark Souls is hard. <laughs> Yes, hard. However, it's even harder on rickety scaffolding, where you're one misstep away from being shoved off the side to your immediate death. I'm having the best time. Because of this, the area known as Blight Town is infamous among Dark Souls fans and beyond for it being a generally hard as nails area to navigate your way through. The man, ah! it's like. Hands. Oh. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I get the rep this area has. <laughs> the enemies in this area certainly suck, and not just the blood spewing mosquitoes. There are the angry stabby boys, fire breathing bug things, and worst of all, blow dart snipers who think they're so great with their poison darts that drain your health quicker than this level drains your will to live, which is very effing fast.
But another huge reason why Blighttown is especially hard to navigate is because of its verticality, which in this case is fancy video game speak for there are a ton of ladders. I mean, look at this hellscape. With a number of baffling routes through this hodgepodge collection of perilous platforms, you can easily take the wrong ladder to a dead end or make a misstep that could force you to redo all your navigation up until that point. Oh god, that was close. Oh. There are so many different areas of Blighttown to explore, but with downward routes that require you to go up at some points and vice versa, and all sorts of branching paths, it's extremely easy to just, well, get lost. But you know what else can get lost? Blighttown! I'm off to Anor Londo. Looks way nicer. I retract my previous statement. If you haven't played the very first Pokemon games, probably don't. And not just because the Pokemon looked all weird and effed up. When Mom says we have Pikachu at home. No, the main reason is that one important part of the story of the original games involved a level so confusing and difficult to navigate, it's very likely you would simply give up and chuck your Game Boy into the nearest canal or reservoir, drowning Pikachu and all his weird looking mates, but ending your torment. That level was the mission to oust the nefarious Team Rocket from Sylphco, a tech firm capable of developing a device that lets you see ghosts, but not capable of an office layout that isn't full of teleporter pads that jump you to a random location somewhere in their 11-storey headquarters. You know what technology works great for navigating an office, Sylphco? Stairs! And signs! While Sylphco does in fact feature stairs, they won't help you one bit with your ultimate goal of getting into the President's office on the top floor, for which you must use teleporters throughout the building to find your way, somehow, to a key card that lets you access even more teleporters, and then, okay, you're already lost just thinking about it, aren't you? The fact there are a whopping 11 floors to this building, coupled with the fact that these houseplants are already straining the Game Boy's graphical abilities, mean you will 1000% get immediately lost inside Sylphco, a building more difficult and frustrating than any Pokemon battle. But don't worry, there are absolutely loads of them in here too. Including, if you do find the hallowed teleporter that actually gets you to the end of the level, your hated rival Gary Oak. How the hell did he teleport up here? Oh wait, nepotism. The facility will not allow you access to the turbine room unless the demonic threat level is brought down inside the foundry. Our security systems cannot be overridden. What's the right percentage of time to be spending on demon slaughter in the video game Doom? We're thinking somewhere between 100 and 100%. But anyone who's played 2016's Doom, or indeed any previous Doom games, will know this ratio is sadly off. Because all too often, a level in this long-running shooter series will be roughly 2% demon slaughter and 98% gliding fretfully around empty rooms you've already been in 20 times trying to figure out where to go. The Foundry is a strong example of such a Doom level, encountered quite early on in this celebration of violent dismemberment. The Foundry, a metal-melting megastructure, is a truly imposing environment. It's constructed across several dizzying floors that must be navigated by careful jumping and comprises several labyrinthine zones that will flood with demons, kicking off a murder fest during which you will definitely lose your bearings, seeing as you've spent the last few minutes navigating purely by following the end of a shotgun. It's all too easy to get lost in the Foundry, being as it is one of those Doom levels that requires careful, considered exploration and backtracking of its twisted metal corridors, which all look fairly similar to each other. And that's before you realise that this is one of those Doom levels that, oh, oh no, requires you to locate several colour-coded keycards, the most hated enemy in the Doom series. 
a series which features several types of giant brains welded onto spider mechs, so that's saying something. Unfortunately, figuring out a way through each part of the Foundry's puzzling environment can feel too much like random luck, rather than clever puzzle solving. Stay focused, stay committed. Which is especially frustrating when you remember you're playing as the impossibly badass Doom Marine, who shrugs off waves of demons like a true badass, but can't seemingly think of a badass way to get past the Foundry's various locked doors and obstacles, like this fingerprint scanner. Texas granted. Oh, touche, Doom guy. Brought her back around. Good for you. Why water requires a temple, I do not know. We require you to live, water. Is that not praise enough? Apparently not, and so our lives are burdened with the infamous water temple from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. This aqueous dungeon doesn't seem like somewhere you could easily get lost in, seeing as it's essentially just one extremely tall room, with lots of other rooms and corridors branching off from it. The problem is that solving this intricate puzzle box of a dungeon requires raising and lowering the water level, a fact explained early on by this fish woman who is also your fiance. It's a whole thing, don't ask. Raising and lowering the water to its three different levels is done by honking on your ocarina in front of these symbols scattered throughout the dungeon. But this needs to be done quite a few times and in a very specific order, and all the while the changing water level alters the appearance of this dungeon's many, many rooms in a way that will fry your brain like an egg on a hot pavement. <coughs> Venturing into the water temple without a walkthrough on hand is a one-way ticket aboard the confusion train to Lostville, and heaven help you if you decide to take a break, because should the layout of this utterly baffling dungeon delete itself from your short-term memory, you may as well delete your Ocarina of Time save as well. To bore you with a personal anecdote viewer, this exact thing happened to me, and while I count Ocarina of Time among my favourite games, I got so lost in the water temple, pinballing around, flooding and draining the place trying to find a room that wasn't a dead end, that I gave up, then forgot where I'd been when I came back to it, and ended up not finishing the game for another five years or so. But on the plus side, I also completely forgot how I ended up engaged to a fish woman, so swings and roundabouts. Wait, where am I? Luke? Wait, I- You found your way to the end of the video! Oh, wow, and that means so have you. Well done. Hope you didn't get too lost on the way. Hope we didn't get too lost on the way. Have we truly all found ourselves? That's- No. That's a question I don't want to think too hard about, actually. Yeah, uh, but if you enjoyed this video, that's an easy question to answer. Hopefully, yes. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And can you think of any levels that you got seriously lost in? Like, there's loads of them out there. Um, and you can shove them down in the comments section and maybe we can do yet another video about this and all get annoyed and be like, oh yeah, I remember I was stuck on that level for ages. Uh, if you want to support us even further, subscribe and you can go join our Patreon, become part of the OX Supporters Club and there's a Discord, it's super fun, everyone's really nice there. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, there's way more videos here that you can go check out. Uh, but I'm now going to try and find my way home, which is difficult because outside the studio, um, Andy, Jane and Mike have now built a maze and so I think we live here now, Luke, sorry. Maybe you do. Oh, you're tall, you can see over the top. Yep. Damn. <laughs>